Something I get asked a lot is how do we actually identify when an athlete is improving from an aerobic perspective and what are some of the metrics we can use and, and more advanced statistics in software like training peaks or, or other monitoring software to understand when that change is occurring or how do we monitor how aerobically fit we are or are we getting any better, etc. over time without necessarily having to do a test. This is a couple of ways we can do it. There's two metrics, aerobic decoupling and efficiency factor. I'm gonna talk through those today and yeah, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Welcome to the channel. If you're watching for the first time, please consider subscribing down below to keep up to date with all the latest content coming out. Make sure you hit the bell as well to be notified as soon as a video comes out each day, trying to get plenty of videos out at the moment. So make sure you are subscribed and notifications are on so you know exactly when a video is coming. The other thing I will say is keep the questions coming down below in the comments. This video is actually off the back of a really great question asked about what is aerobic decoupling? Can you explain it? How does the relationship between pace and heart rate work? Um, what can I do to understand how I'm improving or changes in performance in my, in my training? And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. So great question that came through. I really appreciate them. Keep the comments uh, flowing with your questions. Happy to answer them here on the channel. First of all, I'm gonna talk through aerobic decoupling. So this is straight from the Training Peaks website. I'm gonna read it here and I might put a screenshot of this up. Aerobic decoupling compares the efficiency factor from the first half of an activity to the second half of the activity. A smaller change in efficiency factor, brackets less than 5%, from the first half to the second half may indicate improving aerobic endurance. What does that mean if we don't know what efficiency factor means? Well, let's have a look at efficiency factor first and then we'll come back to aerobic decoupling. Efficiency factor is the ratio of normalized power. So if we're talking cycling, normalized power to heart rate or normalized graded pace to heart rate for a running perspective for a given activity. An increase in this value for steady state, aerobic endurance, intensity rides or runs may indicate an improvement in endurance performance. So first of all, what are some things we're looking at here? Very simple terms, we're just looking at from an efficiency factor perspective, the ratio between what is happening with your heart rate and what is happening with your external measure, pace or power. If we're, if we're having a look at pace, for example, that's what was asked in the question, so I'll go off that one as the example today. If you're running along at 150 beats per minute and say five minute K pace, your heart rate's doing this, it's nice and flat across here, your pace is nice and flat as well. If those two aren't moving, you're gonna have a really good efficiency factor. So that number is going to be higher. EF efficiency factor we want as high as possible essentially because that shows that the ratio is quite good. Um, that's going to show a very, I guess, aerobically uh, fit athlete in terms of they can manage that intensity from an internal response to the external stimulus, which is pace or power. Um, we're managing that. We're able to sustain it. It's it's consistent. We're really handling it well from an aerobic perspective. We're not inducing too much fatigue. All of these factors start to come into it. So efficiency factor we want as high as possible. This is where things start to flip though, is that we actually want aerobic to cut aerobic decoupling to be as low as possible because we don't want uh, as much variation from the first half of the activity to the second half. So efficiency factor is talking about the variation between heart rate and power as we go through, or heart rate and pace throughout the session. Decoupling is comparing the first half variation to the second half variation. So what this means is that in the first half, you might have a little bit of lag time in terms of warm ups. you might get some early variation, it starts to flatten out, you're cruising through your run. But if you get towards the back end of the run, you start to see sky, heart rate skyrocket because you're starting to fatigue, pace start to drop off a bit or stay the same, or heart rate stays the same, pace starts to drop off one or the other, you're gonna see much more variance in the second half and that can indicate we need to work on our muscular endurance and our aerobic endurance overall. Why? Because we don't want the variation. We want our body to be as consistent and constant as possible and just chip away at that same intensity, ideally for longer efforts. And this is where it's key. I'm talking about long sustained aerobic steady state efforts. If you're an Ironman athlete, you're going out, you're doing five hours on the bike, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about high intensity interval training. It's not a useful measure there. It's not really a useful measure in even some um, moderate to intermediate, so like five to 10 minute type efforts. It's more of a measure for like 20 minutes plus in terms of a single effort. But specifically, I would say at the low end of the spectrum, when you're going out and trying to do your base Ks and things like that, this is the prime time to use some of these metrics. So as I said, efficiency factor we want as high as possible because that's gonna tell us we've got the least amount of variance. Aerobic decoupling we want as low as possible because we don't wanna be having an increase in variance between heart rate and pace or heart rate and power in the second half of the, the effort because it shows that we're lacking in terms of our ability to uh, complete work, which is our aerobic capacity, aerobic endurance overall. So to improve on that, it's just a case of chipping away and just allowing our body to adapt over time. There isn't really a secret formula to it. It's just being very progressive in our approach to building the volume in those base Ks the longer slower to make sure that our body gets, gets that adaptation and adapts to doing a little bit more each time 
allows the internal stresses or the internal, I guess, um, measures of intensity or, or how our body's responding to that intensity to catch up and just stay consistent. Ad- adaptation is time. Anything you go and practice, you'll get better at, but you have to practice it consistently over time to do so. So things like making sure you try not to overload by too much, add on five, 10 minutes at a time. You don't have to go and add on half an hour or an hour to each session each week. Just add on small pieces and just build that slowly and progressively. But it's a good one to then have a look at if you've got a really good um, percentage, so aerobic decoupling, anything less than 5% is ideal. If you've got a, a, a minimal drop off between first and second half of your session, that can indicate maybe I actually need to work either a little bit harder uh, in terms of push myself a little bit more or do a little bit more volume at the same intensity to try and just extend that out and allow your body to adapt in a different way. So I guess in terms of practical hands-on uses of these metrics, they're good for understanding any change as efficiency factor goes up in the same session and aerobic decoupling comes down. You start to see, all right, I'm, imp- I'm improving, I'm adapting, I'm getting better. But it's also a good one to then go, oh, maybe I'm getting a bit complacent now because this has been good for a while. Maybe I need to push a little bit harder or work for a little bit longer to get that next level stimulus and take my training or performance to another level. So hopefully that answers the question around aerobic decoupling and then also tying in efficiency factor and how they work together. What metrics do you use? Uh, Leave them in the comments down below. How do you track your performance in terms of aerobic adaptation, particularly those long steady state efforts over time without necessarily having to do a specific test? How do you just track it in your training programs? I'm interested to see what metrics and and methods people use. As always, leave all your comments, uh, uh, leave all your questions in the comments down below. Happy to answer them on a future video. Been loving doing that in response to a lot of questions coming through. Some great content coming out of it. I I love responding and, and problem solving for you guys. As always, please hit the subscribe button if you've been enjoying the content and keep up to date with the channel. It does help the channel grow and the more people that can reach this type of content, I think the better because we're all gonna grow and learn together. That is it for today. We're gonna see you in the next one.